you've done the whole i mean you started as an entrepreneur mm-hmm. uh, and then you went to the funding ecosystem yeah. and then you did your i've sat on every side of the wall and then you did your part for coaching mentoring and all that mm-hmm. and then you're back to scratching that itch right tell me about that what are you trying to build now and uh, uh, what it well, like to, to change the world like all of the startups no not really sukasel is personal again it has its roots from something that I did during my time in Proficio. We ran a program for our client MDEC, more specifically the EU Sahawan program, dealing with a lot of the SMEs and micros out there which were trying to embrace digitalization. Right. So these are the regular mom and pop Typical shops, micro SMEs type business who are now trying to be digital. Yeah, you know, Malay, Chinese, Indian. It was open, it was not a boomy program whatsoever. It was mm. open to everybody. Yeah, it's an MDEC program. Yeah, right? mm. but it was still predominantly boomy in there. They still were Chinese and Indian companies and all that stuff in there. So was open to everybody and we were tasked to look at extracting more performance out of the top performing companies within the entire program and that you saw one had about 300 over thousand plus entrepreneurs hmm. in that program at that point in time the origin story of that started with me way back in Jeli Kelantan for our then Minister of Trade Mustafa Muhammad Tokpa which my ASEAN association did some work for I ran a sort of a mini proficio type thing for my ASEAN association in Jeli Kelantan so for the minister program. Yeah again you know I pulled my cables to get various government agencies involved including MDEC hmm. and so when we typically did a launch event uh, Tokpa you know minister obviously you have to do a launch event and you invite certain VIPs Datuk Yasmin Mahmud insisted on being there and so she came she heard she saw and she said wow brilliant you know uh, EU Sawanori was already there as a program but they were still early nascent stages you know covering university like UMK and all that stuff it wasn't really full blown entrepreneurs thing mm. but it was more of a university program yeah yeah point. yeah so you know she saw what we were trying to do for the entrepreneurs she said hey we could do this and so i'm thankful to her and mdac for that so they uh, kind of adopted that model yeah, and, they and did. made it and and it blew into mm. 300 over 1000 plus entrepreneurs i didn't have the resources yeah, to do right. that but when we you know came full circle to get involved with being asked to pitch or tender for the program that's how we got involved with the eu salon program for officially through proficio the moment you start going into this type of demographic it humbles you because i thought i went in there thinking oh i know everything I'm going to be the sifu they're going to be my students or my paduans kind of thing boy was i wrong they humbled you back and it's really really amazing to hear the stories of all those entrepreneurs that struggled and got to where they were but i had a bit of a red pill blue pill moment after a year of doing it mm. they were reporting the numbers as with any program that professor does we we have very strict reporting because we had to report that back to our our stakeholders and clients we had to make sure we tracked revenues traction growth all these things monthly on a month to month basis and we were running the coach and grow program we were running the SCP program with cradle funded companies level up program with MDAC and all this data was coming in and i'm looking at all these numbers and data and it was a red pill blue pill moment because you start to notice where the real money is so it's not in startups you realize that making a lot of money right? way more hmm. by easily a magnitude of 5 to 10x more than startups and I so know startups don't make money anymore anyway. no they don't <laughs> and so i started questioning 20 years of my hmm. life it literally question you know the fabric of my thought process hmm. li- literally my reality hence the i took the red pill and sukasel is born out of that uh, basically to look at how the ecosystem that i'm very familiar with at further value to this other side of the world and bring them up because they don't get opportunities or access that the startups have you have vcs you have grants you have programs a lot of you money have, being thrown around you have all this stuff that is uh, like a disneyland for startup entrepreneurs when you look at the other side these smes and the micros out there there's too many of them and mm. so the government cannot give to everybody and so there's very limited amount that goes and reaches to them but there's still thousands of others that need it mm. how do you change that equation so how does sukasel work what is, what is the platform well, all basically about? we look at taking some of the products from a lot of these all these uh, SMEs especially those which are dealing with the model of wholesalers and agents and all that stuff we plug ourselves into that so i could bring a lot of the digital tools from the ecosystem because they are, these are all our alumni our entrepreneurs our friends who we have helped build as businesses and they need more clients as well hmm. i could do the tech digitalization integration without putting that burden on the smes because they're not going to be clued in and understand this stuff it's too technical for for a lot of them it's not their vocation it's not their acumen they need to focus on what they need to do 
Mm. But if I could bring better supply chains and ecosystem connectivity through automation and digitalization, and then present it as a solution to help their trade, their commerce. So these are for those of them who are still not exposed. It becomes yeah. a launchpad for a lot of products and brands mm. that are out there. Especially, you know, you look at the products that you see along the highway, the billboards. Yeah. Right. If you drive up to Penang or drive drive down to Johor. Yeah, uh, so the whole way. Yeah, the whole Every way. Every time I balik kampung, it's the whole you, way. You, you know, a lot of urban people are not aware mm. that those companies, those people within those companies. Mm those people doing the businesses for those businesses mm. making way more than you and I combine mm. annually salary wise it makes you question I mean, we, we know some of the big guys who have made it and then yeah. but we know that because you know they're very vocal on social media yeah uh, your Alif Shukri the Dato Vidas yeah. and the Dato Vidas yeah so we, we, we know that these businesses can do really well yeah it may not be fancy no tag uh, yeah uh, but you know Sukasal is the bridge the cash line. Sukasal is the bridge whereby I'm trying to extract more performance out of these companies because I see a lot more potential in them to eventually cross border export or increase their so market size scale up scaling up money, no? yeah which I call the Scalatas mm. program kind of a pun on scale up Malaysia mm. <laughs> also a sister company of Proficio taking them uh, to the next level but minus the stress or the complications for them to do it and so we would facilitate and be that bridge that allows them to access a wider mm. market audience so that they can scale and get even bigger mm. but no. how's the response like so far very positive I mean you know I, I've had uh, I'm on my fundraising journey at the at this point in time so it's fun for me because mm. I get to experience what the entrepreneurs have been complaining to me and mm. saying I'm the evil guy that denied them the funds never gave them money yeah, yeah it's a bit karma in <laughs> some ways now you're going around asking for money yeah yeah it's, it's, it's fun in that sense but the, the strange mm. thing for me mm. is that I, I think I've easily spoken to about 40 plus 50 plus people mm. within the scene you know in this whole fundraising process nobody mm. has said no Mm. A outright rejection saying oh this thing is shit this thing will never work mm. you know nobody said no mm. they said build it we want to see the numbers mm. validate it then we'll come in because they know it's me I don't know whether they're being nice or they, they see something <laughs> so you are more a fan of bootstrapping I guess yeah Starting so with build, money, build first. yes I mean I've even you know figured out a way for my clients my brands mm. that will be using Sukasel as a platform to come in as investors without putting a single cent Hmm. And so now I've easily got more than 15 plus brands who have all committed to say, Coach, we will come in. We will. We want to be the investor guys, not hmm. just being a client, but you know, we come in. They want uh, skin in the game. La. They want they skin want in the game, but they're in a position where we don't have huge amounts of money to hmm. invest. One of them you know, challenged me. I said, can you figure out a way for us to come in as investors in Sukasel? Because I do want this to be a platform that is by you know, product founders and brands out there. If I could involve them as investors, how would I go about doing it without them having to fuck out a single cent funding wise right but i could monetize off inventory mm. and so that's the the way i i, I figured out mm. right and so uh Sukasel is quite interesting because it's going to be powered by the brand founders themselves so uh, your community will be yeah. basically f fueling the the, yeah, the project exactly the growth mm.